I can't wait to litigate this with you in court. Go for it. Can't wait. You know what? Stand it's gonna be great. Stand it's gonna be great. Line. Stand in line. You, you guys, you guys, you guys have a lot of uh, litigation Stand coming. Stand in line. You know. Bring, bring it on. There you go. Bring it on. Go ahead. And we'll see if a judge agrees with what, how, what you're doing right here now. today. Go to court right now. And oh, it's coming. It's coming. I'm waiting. Bring it on. Bring it on. Go ahead. I can't wait to litigate this with you in court. Go for it. It's where I had it stuff. Okay. So right now it's 2:35. Uh, all, all that, all parties are present. Uh, presenter, attorney coming up for the state, attorney Cooperman, attorney Seeger, and the defendant Mr. Reyes are present. Uh, our witness is on the stand from yesterday. Uh, Thought process here is we will go 4.30 again uh, with a break somewhere between now and 4.30 uh, for the staff and for all parties involved. And then tomorrow we will resume uh, again on Fridays. I do it is a smaller docket tomorrow uh, than it has been earlier this week. And, uh, and I have a small housing docket in Corbin 3 as well. But the goal here, as always, is to start as close to 2 or 2.30 as possible and continue forward. Um, I think uh, maybe that will put us in a good position. So with that being said, uh, Attorney Senator, you're with Yes, Your Honor. At this point, I would ask the court the permission to continue on with the tape. I believe you stopped yesterday at the 8.46 mark with regard to this file on the tape. Yes, Mr. Not Attorney, my employees and not my customers. I can, you have no expectation of privacy in public, which the attorney should let you know. You should let her know that. All right. Would you do, do this? Up so you're not on this camera Jan, with this guy. Jan. There is no close expectation. Your door lock the door. You're closed. He wouldn't. He won't get out. That's the problem. I'm telling you. Okay. Close your door and lock the door. So okay. you're refusing services yes. to the public? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Because. So now let's go over here. That, that I'm not just. There is no disruption by peacefully filming, sir. What did I say earlier? I don't mean. Okay, uh, Attorney Pinter, I think if I heard it correctly on tape, did you ask uh, to have the door closed to the clerk's office at that at that point? Yes. And why is that? Well, I could see that uh, there was no way to persuade the individual to comply with the policy, and it was disrupting the office at that time. So there's no other way to protect the people or to avoid the situation than to make the office accessible for that time, that time period. And that's why you made that request to have it shut? Yes. Okay, the next one, this is on the eight, 915 mark. What we see here at the 915 mark on this particular file on the tape, what office is that if you recognize it? Uh, that's the Office of the Tax Assessor. Okay. Obviously, you're familiar with it. Have you worked in building all those years? Yes. Yes, I am. I don't need, I don't listen you to your rules. I listen to the law. I listen the to the law. And as an attorney, as an attorney, you should know the law. Really. You were you told should. you can film the hallways oh, and the walls. Oh, no. You cannot go into a department and film over the counter. Stop you want touching me to destroy me. your Stop. phone? Turn it off. Are you threatening to turn it phone? off. Stop it. Turn it off. Nope. Get a life. Come on. Stop, Stop disrupting it. everybody. Phil, Phil. He's going to cost you a lot of money. Please. They're going to get pissed. Can you call them? They're mad at me for having it. Call them. They're gonna get mad at you because you're making a big deal for no reason. Because yeah, you're wait, you you think about it. You had three guys come out this morning. Listen to me. You called them. Listen, yeah, you because you them. don't you don't take a card. You don't sign in. You're disruptive. I don't they need came, to. Those three officers could have been on another side helping out. All you're doing you is You called them. Up. You Sean, called them. I'm sorry, you my called friend. Them. You need to get a you job and get them. a life. You called them. You need to get a life. Yeah, let's go outside because taxpayers have. That's the problem. Is taxpayers have business going on? Yeah, but they have no expectation of privacy in public. Don't touch me. I keep telling you. That. But this disruption. You are Let's causing the disruption. Let's talk out here. You are causing the disruption. Let's talk out here. Go out here. Uh, do you want come me to take him out? I doubt I doubt he's gonna come say on. yes. Just, just come out here. Stop pushing me. Yeah. Stop pushing me. 
Stop, stop pushing me. Stop. Stop pushing me. You can do whatever you'd like. You can do whatever you'd like. I'm not causing any disturbance. I want to peacefully. I want to peacefully record and exercise my First Amendment right. Not allowed to record over a counter. Yeah, get off of me. Stop. Did you guys call DP? Did you work out? Tell them to come right away. Yeah. And they're going to tell you the same thing that I'm telling you. You're an attorney. I don't understand how you don't know these things. You, let me tell you something. I explained this morning what the rules were. Reasonable rules. No, that's not reasonable rules. You can't. You can't what did, what put, did I say that you, you could can't, do? No, You said you I cannot me. film behind a counter. That's what you said. Correct. I'm not filming behind the counter. I'm filming exactly everything I could see You're from public. You're filming counter at workers. It doesn't matter. They have no expectation of privacy in public. You should know this. Why? Why are you... Why are you ignorant of the law? These are these are the rules. Do you have expectation of privacy? In, is there an expectation of privacy in public, sir? Has the courts ruled that you have a, not, that? Has the courts ruled that you have a, a privacy that you're that I, that you can be it, it, that it's privacy in public? This is public, correct? This this facility has established rules. That doesn't what matter. What people can do. That doesn't matter. It does because that doesn't matter. You does, can't put rules that infringe on my rights. You can't you, do that. You also can't override our rules. I can. Because I don't override. Adopted. I don't. I don't override them. The Constitution overrides it, not me. The Constitution. Your rules are unlawful. They're this, against the Constitution. They violate about, rights. We can talk about stuff all day. This is not a sandbox. There are people here doing business. In yeah, the and I'm not here to interrupt any business. I'm here by to peacefully filming, record. I'm here to. You are disrupting. I am a journalist gathering content for a story. That's what I'm doing. And you're gonna keep all you're doing. Look. The tax assessor closed. Town clerk's office closed to the public. You see? Okay. The director has to have the tape stop at the 1222 mark. The assessor's office was the door shut at that time. The door to the assessor's office. At the end of the tape here? Yeah, right here. Yes. Okay. And the same question I'm going to ask you, I asked you before, which is why was the door to the assessor's office closed. Pretty much the same as before. In addition, there was no other way to uh, protect the uh, city officials and personnel in that office. Uh, we're concerned at that time that policy being violated was going to impact those individuals there. So there's another way to stop the, the intrusion and close the door temporarily. Closed. Right. Well, see, see, no that's, services. That's the disruption. No, that's, that's you. That you caused. Police officer that you caused. And have to arrest you. No, that's not you're, true. You're causing a disruption. That's not true. Now. Nope. Hey, you can not disagree true. with it, but that's a constitutionally a constitutionally protected activity can't be turned into you a crime. You know what your protected activity is? To walk the hall, take your pictures, and to go into publicly not, accessible areas and to take pictures. Not to yes, disrupt. I can. I'm no, not. You can't. Yes, you I can. Can't disrupt the operations. I can't wait to litigate this with you in court. Go for it. Can't wait. You know what? Stand it's gonna in be line. great. Stand it's gonna be great. Line. Stand in line. You, you guys, you guys, you guys have a lot of uh, litigation Stand coming. Stand in line. You know. You know what you do with this kind of stuff is you disrupt. You're gonna be litigating for a while. Bring it on. There you go. Bring it on. Go ahead. And we'll see if a judge agrees with what, how you, what you're doing right here now. today. Go to the court right now and oh, it's file coming. your papers. It's coming. I'm waiting for all the relevant documentation, yeah. all the relevant body camera footage. But you know, you can play this nicely. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Instead. I'm trying to. Here's the professional part. The rules of engagement are the city hall hallways open to you. You can walk down, up and down, you take pictures. Anywhere around, that's publicly accessible. Write your story. You don't decide what's publicly accessible. Yes, I, if it's open and there it's publicly places, accessible, I explained it's to you open. That there are places that are not open for yeah. journalists to just film at random. Yeah, that, that, well, be, that would be a that would be called a, that would be called a restricted then, area. Then you challenge it. That if would be called a restricted the area. Here's the way to look at it: There's policies in place that say you can't do it. If you want to challenge it, you can challenge it. Go ahead, and challenge it in court. But mm -hmm. you can't challenge which, it which here. Which which I am doing. You mm -hmm. cannot challenge it here because you're disrupting. Public business. You are not me. Sean, did you, you see are. the line on? Did you, you see are. the sign on the door when you came you this are. morning? Listen to me. Did you see the sign? I don't all, read. I don't all read visitors time. must sign in. It's still post pandemic. You were supposed to take a car. You circled around me and like you're some special human being. You got not special. Well, you, Anybody you, can do it. No, not just me. You're not. That these are the rules that they've implemented. Anybody here. can Why do it. Why can't you play by the rules? Anybody can do it because Why? the rules violate my constitutional yeah. rights. That's what I'm trying to so say. So I'm just curious. I'm going to ask you something from. 
you've been here before you filmed what what are you trying to i never like, felt you never let me upstairs you you came around you were filming everything did you downstairs. did you allow me to come upstairs no because you didn't comply with the rules you didn't okay. fill you didn't you didn't take a courtesy card you didn't your, your rules name. Respectfully, your rules don't violate my rights. That's the only point I'm going to prove here today. Okay, I'm going to prove but it. But that's your opinion, okay? That, no, that's that, that's You've just not it's been black supported and white. By a court of law, have you been supported by a court of law? No, have I've been, you been supported by a court of law in that proposition? Yes, or I will no? be. I will be. You haven't though, soon. Have you? You I will have, be. But have you? I will be. But have you? Because normally town halls aren't this dumb to just to do this. I've been to many oh, town halls okay, so and, not, we're, we're and, not, and not and not and not maybe just ignorant. I'm, not, I, I'm I'm sorry for saying dumb. Maybe you're just ignorant of the law. But maybe. I've been to many town halls and no one has ever given me this many problems over filming in public because it's a constitutionally protected activity. Let, let, let me let me respond to that by telling you that the people who are working in these different offices work very hard. And they're trying to protect their public customers who are coming in to fill out documents. Yeah. Many of those I'm not filming documents. documents. Many, many, many of these documents are on tables, on chairs, on counters, and they're out there and they're discussing business. And you want to insist on going in and filming around that mm -hmm. and taking a risk that the public's documents will be publicly viewed. Who needs that? No, uh, that's, that's a risk. Yeah, to people. that's that's that's, that's not true. People. A lot of the public documents are public record, as you know, you and they can be and them. they could do and they can do a, 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 a FOIA request. See, let, let, You're being let, unreasonable. Let, let's have a gentleman discussion for one second. You can film in the hallway. You can film in the foyer, maybe. But the documents, if you want to see them, look at them. You can did FOI I did them. I force those two women to come out of their office and stop working? You can FOI. Why the are documents. they not working? You I didn't force them to leave their office and stop you working. Can, you can FOI. Why documents. are they coming over here and stop working? Because you're What's disrupting. Because you're disrupting. No, I'm not. He's allowed to film in the hallways. Which are, oh, he yeah. went into the departments. He's not allowed to film over the counter. He starts filming everything. He's disruptive. He's intrusive. And I'm tired of it. Mm -hmm. That's why. I yeah, you you already tired of it when you physically assaulted me earlier. I didn't physically assault you. You got my face. It's on the camera. You. It's on the camera. Physically It's on the camera. Don't worry. You need to get a life. Can I can can I just get your name and badge number, sir? Just back up. Let me talk to him real quick. Just let me talk to him. Some space, Officer Contreras, six three three. Thank you, sir. What's going on? Nothing. You just... were just at the PD. Yeah, I was just at the PD. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you here earlier recording? Yeah, I was here earlier recording. And then you went to the PD. Uh huh. And now you're here. Yeah, I'm here because I wasn't allowed upstairs. Okay. So I had to go to PD to file a uh, criminal complaint against this gentleman for assaulting me. Okay. So um, that's why I went to the PD to write a statement. Um, I'm here again because I'm a journalist okay. working on a story. I'm yeah. capturing things that are in public. That's all. Okay. They're they're telling. Over the counter like they nope. Said? I went. In, they they're what they're saying, officer, is that I can't even enter into the town hall office and record in the office, because if I do, they're saying that that is somehow against the law. Okay. But uh, as I'm sure you're aware, okay. I'm not putting my phone behind a camera. I'm not in a restricted area. Eyes can't trespass. Okay. So whatever I can see from public. I can record, record right? Right? Okay. right? okay. So that's all. I don't I'm not going into restricted areas. Yeah. I don't even want to talk to anybody. Right. I just want to walk around here, yeah. gather my content and be on my way. Okay. But this gentleman over here wants to escalate this yes, okay. he wants to escalate the situation after he just put his hands on me. He obviously didn't learn his lesson. I felt bad for pressing charges on you because I was like, I don't want to ruin this guy's life. But guess what? You deserved it, buddy. So at the end of the day, He's out of control. He's causing a disturbance. You can't, I, I, I'm conducting a lawful activity. How can you turn that into a disturbance? I'm not doing anything wrong. I was very reasonable to the other officers, just like I'm being very reasonable with you. I just wanna be, I just wanna be quiet, record, exercise my First Amendment right to record in public. If they wanna lock doors, if they wanna start locking all their doors and, and close the access to the public, which is probably unconstitutional and probably wrong for them to do, not probably, definitely, because I should be able to enter in the town clerk's office and say, hey, can I get a FOIA request form? Hey, can I, can I get this from you? I should be able to ask for services, but they're preventing me from acting services. But that's right now, not your, now yeah, but that's, but that's not your problem because, you know, that's, that's something a court can handle in a civil okay. suit. But they're trying to get you to, to use your authority to arrest me or to prevent me from just simply engaging in any constitution. If they want to lock the doors, that's fine. Yeah. I'm not telling you to, hey, officer, they're locking the doors, arrest yeah. them. That's for a court to decide, right? They can do that, lock it, whatever. I think it's wrong, but what I'm saying is I'm not doing anything wrong. I just want to walk around town hall and film. That's all I want to do because I'm a journalist exercising my First Amendment right of freedom of press. That's it. Okay. It's very simple. Um, 
So just give my, he's obviously getting their side of the story, I got your side of the story. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's two sides to every story, I gotta listen to them too. Oh, but this is um, another reason why I record, because there's only one side of the story when, and th there's always two sides of the story, but then yeah. there's the truth, there's, you know, sure. and then right. there's, there's the truth. The middle ground, and then there's the truth, right? right. So, and the so camera don't lie. They decide uh, what's going on, or they tell my coworker, and then you're, you know, if you're okay. recording and you're not bothering anybody, and you're not obviously going over the counters. Yep, not going over the counter. I mean, I don't that's what I'm saying, whatever. I don't understand. I don't understand. Where did they accuse you of going over the camera? So uh, what I did was I just walked into this town clerk's office right here yeah. to ask her for a FOIA request form. And uh, as I walked in there, they, the security guard who assaulted me earlier got in front of me, said, you can't record in here. You can't record in here. And I was like, yes, I can record in here. He's saying that I can't record in the office, in the town hall office, right. which is not true. Excuse me, sir. What's your name? You, you guys, no, nope, no, nope, turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. You look like Utter. You must be his. Uh... Thank you. Good. Yeah, I'm just gonna put that in your pocket. All right. Go. You were told not to go film in the offices. You film the offices. Okay. Just gonna make sure you don't have anything. There on. There you go. You got the camera on? Just... Yes, I do. I don't see the lighting. Yes, it is. See? Okay. There you go. Come on. We got buddies with Utter. You? No, I'm not buddies with anybody. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys just keep on making it worse for yourself. Take him in? Yeah. Welcome. I'll be in Publicly accessible area. That's recorded. Oh, man. What am I being arrested for? What am I being arrested for? Trespassing. Okay. In, in, in town hall, correct. Mm -hmm. You told him not to film over the counter, which you I did. wasn't filming over yep. the counter. I was filming in the in the office, which the video approved. That's okay. fine. And they said you want to staircase. It's not working. Okay, perfect. Oh, there we go. We'll use the staircase. Perfect. Yeah, that's fine. You commit the crime today, and I go away and cuss. Isn't that justice? <laughs> Oh, you, you committed the crime today, but uh, okay. I'm in cuffs. The difference is when you're arrested later, it's going to be a lawful arrest. This is a what's called an unlawful arrest. That's what it's called. So you know when they could make lawful arrest, unlawful arrest, you need immunity. You want me to grab the statement? I don't think he's going to fit in my car. Sure. Hey, did you did you ever ask me to leave, officer? Yeah. I wasn't here before. Did you ask me to leave? Did you ask me to leave? How about you? Did before? you ask, did you ask yep. me to leave? Oh, it's on your body camera telling me to leave. Cause don't you don't you gotta warn somebody first? Don't you gotta ask somebody to leave first? Sir? No. Okay. You the one. You guys are coding to area. Coding to? Yeah, no, no, no. Up first. Up first. Watch your head. There you go. Like I said, I'll take it. You know, it's your face in the course there. of the day, right? Ain't that the truth? Everybody's okay upstairs, though? Yeah, people are like this for the second just put in there that you asked him to leave. He said he couldn't he couldn't film. He went in and filmed over the counter. He advised that his personal space. Make sure you put in there that there's documents that he's not allowed to film. That's why he's not allowed to film and all that stuff. Alright. And then we're good. Okay. Uh, okay.
Thank you, I have no uh, further questions um, at this time for this witness. Thank you. All right, sir. <clears throat> I know I asked you some of these questions previously on board here, but I'll try to get past them real fast. You are a deputy corporate counsel, correct? Yes. And your job is to advise the mayor, correct? Yes. City council, correct? Yes. And other uh, public officials that work for the city, correct? Yes. You are not an elected official, correct? No. You do not get to make policy, correct? Yes. Yes, you're not allowed to make I policy. I don't make policy. Okay. You simply provide legal advice to the mayor, right? Yes. And by the way, uh, earlier on the day of this incident, this we're talking about July 15th, 2021, uh, were you served? Did you get a notice of an intent to sue for my client? I don't recall getting that that day, but at some point I saw a notice. Do you recall when you saw it for the first time? I don't recall exactly, no. But later, as we watched the video, Mr. Reyes told you that he was going to sue the city, correct? He had words to that effect that right. he was thinking of doing that. And in fact, another part of your job is to defend the city from lawsuits, correct? Sometimes we do, sometimes outside counsel does, yes. Okay. Sir, so you're familiar with the city of Danbury Charter, right? Yes, sir. And you're familiar with section 6-4 of the charter, correct? Yes. And in fact, that section states that it is the duty of corp corporate counsel to defend lawsuits against the city, correct? Yes. Okay, and that's your office, correct? Yes. So if Mr. Reyes was going to bring the lawsuit against the town of Danbury, like he said he would, you'd be the guy defending it, right? Not exactly. I personally may not, because we have outside counsel. We also have counsel appointed by our insurance carrier that handles many cases that we can't personally handle. We, we are, we're a relatively small office, so we don't personally handle uh, most of the cases. So you yourself don't handle actual litigation? Not as much in this position now. Years ago I, I would do so, but not as much in this position. You, you write memoranda though, correct? Yes. So may I approach the clerk, Your Honor? Yes. I just want to see the exhibits on that. So I'm going to show you Exhibit 4. You were asked about this yesterday. You recognize this, right? Yes. Did you receive a written request to produce this memo? I don't know if I had a written request, probably more of a verbal request to assist. And again, you're familiar with the Denbury City Charter, correct? Yes. Section 6, 4. Do you recall what it says about producing memoranda by your office? It's, it's generic language regarding our office representation of city officials and departments. Sir, isn't it a fact that it says Section 6.4 states that upon written request, I, let me backtrack, that you shall be the legal advisor of the city council, the mayor, and all city officers, boards, and commissions, and in all matters affecting the city, and shall, upon written request, furnish them with written opinion on any question of law involving their respective powers and duties. I'm going to object that the council is reading the document, but not in evidence. I'm asking them about a law. You're reading it verbatim. I understood. I'm going to overrule the objection. Is that the correct statement of Section 6.4 of the Danbury City Charter? It's my recollection of the way it reads, yes. And are you telling us that there was no written request in any way, shape, or form in this case? Objection has to be answered. I don't think that specific question was asked and answered yet. Thank you. Overruled. 
That was your repeat the question. Sure. Are you, is your testimony here today that there was no written request from the mayor to your office to produce exhibit four? I think I think my what I remarked before was that I don't remember specifically that a written request was made, but a request was made for a review. Okay. If there was a written request, would that be kept as part of the records in your office? Probably. In the ordinary course of business? Probably. And that's part of the business of your office to keep those requests? Probably. And if you were asked to produce it, would you be able to? We would produce what we have that was not privileged. Oh. So correct me if I'm wrong. That document out there, that's your response to a request from your client, the mayor. Correct? That was a request from our client to assist in a situation that had developed. Yeah. Right. So exhibit four is your answer, your legal opinion and advice to your client, the mayor, correct? It's both correct. The legal, okay. legal opinion, advice, and counsel to the mayor. Is Who is your client, correct? Yes. Did you produce this document for the uh, office of the state's attorney? I did not produce it for them, no. Okay. Oh, you, oh, you mean, did I? Let me rephrase the question for yeah. you. The physical document that I'm holding in my hand, did you provide this to the office of the state's attorney? I, I don't remember if I did specifically or not. It was available in our file. Mm -hmm. They could have gotten it from anybody who had a copy of that in the city or anywhere else as a, as a circulated document. So this is a circulated document? Well, it was provided to the mayor and then circulated to department personnel. And I, so it could have been in anybody's files at any point. But it was re in response to either a verbal or a, re a written request from a mayor, Yes, correct? yes. Okay. So this is your response to your client's legal questions about asking for advice? It's an advisory, mem yes, it's an okay. advisory memorandum to the client. All right. Let me just check my notes, Judge. Take time. Do you recall when you were asked to create this memo? Probably sometime between when the uh, library incident occurred in June and sometime in July, sometime in that, in that short time frame. And do you recall what you were actually asked when uh, you were approached to produce this memo? Well, when that situation happened, there were some questions that were brought up about these matters. So as a result of that, we produced that memorandum to help advise them accordingly. And actually, this memorandum is dated July 8th, 2021, right? Right. And when was the library incident? I think it was in the middle of June. So at that point is when we were asked to summarize some of the issues that arose at that time and could arise. How long did you work in this document? Not sure. But we had a lot of other work going on. As you understand. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know approximately how much time you spent preparing this legal opinion? I have to say, I mean, there's a lot of other things going on in the middle. Um, maybe a day. Okay. After the day. And if I could just see the exhibit. So you remember when the judge asked you that exhibit four was for one of the basis of exhibit two? I think there were some remarks, I'm not sure. And you said that. yes? Yes, I did. So you spent one day on exhibit four and that formed the basis of exhibit two? I, I think my earlier testimony was that I worked on the memorandum and that memorandum uh, shifted into the production of the language for that document, or some of that document. Approximately a day for the memorandum, though, right? Give or take. Yeah. So, this memorandum specifically mentions that this is uh, following the Long Island audit video maker visits, right? That's what it says. Oh, it does. And that refers to my client, Mr. Ace, correct? It could, it could. If that was, if that was the individual named in it, I guess I didn't read it immediately, but that is probably what it was directed for. Oh, sir, you authored this document, correct? 
Yeah, I'm saying I didn't, if you only had it in front of you for a moment. Oh, I'm sorry. Then yes, please, by all means, take your time. <clears throat> Very first paragraph refers to a Long Island audit uh, video meeting. First line. Yes. And that refers to Mr. Reyes, correct? I believe it does. And you were asked to produce this specifically because of Mr. Reyes? No. No. I was asked to produce it because of the incident at large and other possible incidents flowing from it so people knew the law, so my clients understood the law and so forth. In response to Mr. Reyes' actions at a library earlier in mid-June of 2021, correct? Yes. Okay. And there are no, there's nobody else specifically referred to by name who is not in. Tell me if I have, I have to read it, but I don't think there was. Okay. Talking about Exhibit 4. Fourth paragraph from the top. That's, again, your words says, while this office is still continuing to do a deeper dive, right, into these issues. Correct? Yes. So this particular memo that you wrote in one day um, did you ever complete the deeper dive? We, we did do some additional research, mm -hmm. but we were able to, in order to uh, advise our clients on the immediate matter, this was produced initially. And, okay. and the immediate then, matter is Mr. Reyes, correct? Sorry? The immediate matter is Mr. Reyes. Not necessarily just that, even though in the first paragraph it references initially, but it could be in any situation. Right. where this type of, uh, of an event occurs. So other than Mr. Reyes, were there any other events that you had to handle or you were anticipating that you needed to give them an immediate opinion? I don't think there's any specific matter, but there could have been others, and I think there were some other incidents that happened with other people who came in. Around June, July 8th, 2021? In that general range, in that general range, after, I think, after. After, exactly, that's what I'm saying, right? Drafted any other memoranda on this issue as a result of your deeper time? I've not. Okay. Have there been any further requests from the office of the mayor or the city of Denver for you to draft any further memoranda on this issue? There haven't specifically been. I think that okay. the I think that the memoranda was very satisfactory mm -hmm. and provided guidelines that they would be that would be useful for them. Wait, you provided guidelines for them? Well, I'm saying guidelines meaning the language and the recommendations and the concepts okay. within. Yes. So you provided them with the proper language to use in a policy. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, I suggested language in policy that added on to some policy language that was already there. Okay. I just don't want to, I want to look at my marked up version, Your Honor. If you want to just take your time. to the outer foyer of the office. That's the space that's right before the counter, correct? Um, that is space that does not include the counter. So it's surrounding three walls, let's say. The fourth wall being the open counter space. Would be that so space. if this were the counter, and that was the entrance into the office, 
I would be now standing in the foyer, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, not that I'm expert on foyers, but yes. I did not ask. I don't think anybody here is an expert on foyers. But nonetheless, you use the term foyer in your memorandum. You mentioned it in the video. Now, your memorandum refers to the city hall building use policy. You know what that is, right? Yes. That was the policy that was in effect before you wrote this memorandum, correct? It was an existing policy, mm -hmm. yes. yes. And uh, yeah, according to your memorandum, that policy is available upon proper request, correct? Yes. So in order for somebody to learn about that policy, they have to make a proper request first, correct? Uh, what that means is that the business use policy is in place. It's, it can be found on the website, for example, okay. or checking with offices. Right. If somebody wants to use that policy, then they can make a request to the forums. Okay. But in your memo to the mayor, would you agree that this, you say that it is, in that case, and upon proper request, they can request the city hall building use policy on file, process to arrange for doing what they seek to do at the future time, right? That's what it says, yes. Okay. Well, what, by, by the way, what's a proper request? What does that constitute? Well, the way, it's, the way it's worked in the past is that if you have an individual or a group that wants to use a portion of City Hall, mm -hmm. they make a request to public buildings officials, for example. Mm -hmm. They seek a copy of that policy, how do we do this? Mm -hmm. And they're told that there's a policy. If we provide a copy of it, they fill it out. And then at the appointed date and time, they would come in and use the building as part of the facility at that point. And it's, it's, it's considered an, an alternative way to avoid you know, over-occupancy, disruption, or use of the, of the building at a time when something else is going on in that same place. And that policy was at the time of at least as late as this memorandum, correct? Yes. And then let's get to... Exhibit 2. Right? Remember this? This is after the memorandum, correct? Yes. Was this, was this ever added to the official building policy that you have to re ask upon request? It's generally unrelated to the building use policy. Okay. The building use policy is a formal request for use of part of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this was put in place in order to address these types of issues that they were asking me about before. Uh, similar to the issue that happened that we just looked at. It's the entry into a building and access for purposes that are identified here. Okay. And the purposes identified here are, include masking policy, right? There's, 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 a, mask, mask, there's a masking. There's, there's definitely a mask policy. There's a masking right? policy there, yes. There's no mention of mask policy in your memorandum, correct? Would it help you if I show you on radio? I would agree that probably no mention of the mask policy. Mm -hmm. Well, just to make sure, right. take a look at your work. Absolutely nothing about your mask policy, correct? Right. So, when we were here yesterday, and the judge asked you, is this exhibit four what you based your, what went into making this exhibit two? And you answered something to the effect that yes, that wasn't entirely accurate, correct? Some of, some of that policy that you have there addresses these issues in the memorandum. Mm -hmm. Some of them were already exist in existence prior to the portion related to this issue. 
but you, you tell us this was new. This was after the uh, memorandum, right? Well, there, there probably was a shorter policy regarding masking and signing before then. The, the bottom half is an add-on, so that the full document was produced after my memorandum and included the portion of the, uh, the portion of the policy includes this subject okay. that the memorandum provides. So, just to be clear, your memorandum didn't go into this whole thing, just a little portion at the bottom, right? It, it's actually, I mean, that's not incorrect, it added on to the policy okay. that's there. Yeah. It's added on to the policy. You don't want to have two separate pieces of paper. There's no paper on the door. You can see from the video. One to condense into a policy that people can read and easily see. Understood. So it would be fair to say you don't want to have two different pieces of paper about same or similar policies floating around. You want it all in one place, right? It, it, that really wasn't my decision. Uh, one side advised on what should be in the policy. Other people could decide if they want two pieces of paper, one or more. But you just told us that the reason this was done this way is because you don't want that. But now you're telling me that collectively, collectively, I, I think there was some discussion about how to put it together, what to put it on, and so that's the way it was done. Okay. And it wasn't really a legal decision, but that way. I understand. So. You are shown this exhibit three, right? That's the door to City Hall on July 15th of 21, right? I don't remember of the exact date. I don't see the date on here. Okay. I don't remember. Well, you were asked if that fairly and accurately represents what the door to City Hall looked like on January, I'm sorry, January, July 15th of 2021, and he answered yes. I, I don't, I seem to recall my remark was that that is the front door of City Hall, whether it was on July 15th or not, I don't remember. So as far as that exhibit goes, you have no idea when that sign was on there. Probably it looked just like that in June and maybe later on too. Okay, but you would agree that exhibit two doesn't appear at that door, right? There's, there are two front doors to City Hall, and then there's the interior space with some additional notifications. Sir, I'm not asking you about the amount of doors. I'm asking you, on this picture, I believe... I don't see it on this picture. Okay, very good. Can you tell us, you, you sat here and you watched the video, right? And yeah. you were asked questions about the video. Where in the video can we see Exhibit 2 posted? I mean, the hall, mostly the video show the hallway. Well, the you sat there through the area. entire video that was part of your testimony. Do you remember that part? Yes, yes. Can you tell us where in that video we could find Exhibit 2, the policy, displayed? Well, if you're asking if the video showed areas of the hallways, you wouldn't find it posted in the hallways because people would get notice. If you don't go to the second floor, you wouldn't see it if you, if you went to the third floor. So you, you'd never see it, perhaps, if it were posted on one floor, not the other. Okay. So the answer to my question, nowhere in this video will you be able to see exhibit two appear on a wall or a door, correct? Most of the... Yeah, I'm, 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 going, I'm, I'm going to object uh, on that. I think he's asked an answer. Oh. Most of the policies like this would be posted naturally on the front door because everybody coming in would see that. You, you, you normally might not post it in other places because not everybody would see it. So if it had to be posted somewhere, it would have been on the front door. That's one place. Could have been with the, with the security guard. Could have been on the Another front wall of the interior. Well, is the real answer here is you don't know where it was posted? I know it was posted on the front door at some point in time. Okay. And the security guard doesn't get advised that the policy was in place. But on July 15th of 2021, you don't know if this was posted anywhere at all, correct? It may have been posted somewhere that I'm not aware of. But so we're not aware of this document, Exhibit 2, 
on July 15th of 2021, as you sit here today, you have no idea whether it was posted on that day anywhere in City Hall. I normally go up and down and inspect the doors. It could, it could have been posted. It could have been posted in another area in the front of the building. Oh, so personally, I'm not aware. in your memo referencing forms that would have to be filled out or requests? You mean the business use policy? Yeah. Yeah. Does your office generate those forms? No. Does your office keep those forms? We have, we do have a copy of Okay, but you don't generate it. We don't. Okay. And if somebody had to get that form, they have to come and make a proper request, right? Or go on the website, they can probably get it there. Probably? I'm not sure. Now, again, during this entire encounter with Mr. Reyes, I only do this question. This is, was your first encounter in person with Mr. Reyes, correct? Well, there were, two, you? there were two encounters, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Fair enough. So what you see on the video is your first set of encounters with Mr. Reyes, correct? I believe so, yes. And it's also your last set of encounters outside of today with Mr. Reyes, correct? I think so. I may have seen him somewhere in between. I'm not sure, but basically, yes. Oh. At no point during your two encounters in that day did you present Mr. Reyes with the building use policy. Correct? There probably would be no reason for me to do that because I didn't ask for it. I'm just asking you a true or false question. During your two encounters with Mr. Reyes on July 21st, July 15th of 2021, at no point did you offer him the building use policy. Correct? I would. And you did, correct? I did. Okay. At no point did you give him a copy of Exhibit 2, correct? I wouldn't have given him that either. And then I heard that he was perfectly familiar with the policy Sir. on both occasions. I'm not asking what you would have done. You and I have sat here and watched the same video. I'm just trying to make sure that this is all of the story and there's nothing more. On that day, you did not give him a copy of this policy, correct? I would. And you did, correct? Yeah, I did. And by the way, Exhibit 3, right? Where it says, must sign in, right? Welcome to City of Danbury, something, something. It's cut off, must sign in, right? Right. It doesn't say no entry without signing in, correct? That's exactly what it says on there. Fair enough. That's, that's a fair answer. Now, also, when it comes to exhibit two, right, the bottom line, all the way, failure to comply may result in denial, in delay or denial of entry and access to the building, correct? Yes. Okay. So it's not shall result, correct? It says may. Right. being asked about the purposes and the whys and wherefores of the policy, right? Yes. And you mentioned security of documents, right? There's confidential yes. documents, and I think your testimony was that sometimes they are in chairs or tables, right? That yes. they could be there? Okay. Can you tell us where in this video we can see confidential documents? Well, when I, when I made that remark, it was in, in 
engagement with Mr. Reyes. Okay. So it's not in any produced advisory document. Uh, each each case would have to go on its own. You have to look at what's going on, where the camera is, right. what the counter situation is, what the office looks like, what the computer screen might show, what time of day it was, etc. So it's, it's it's a it's a general um, but purposeful uh, remark. I understand. Yes. But can you tell us where in this video? that we've seen, can we find confidential or secure or restricted documents? So for example, if you are talking about the assessor's office mm -hmm. that we saw, right. the assessor's office has people's information. On I'm not asking you what the assessor's office has. I'm asking you, yes, in the video we've seen, beware. where in the video, not the physical location, in the video, where can we see we, members of the courtroom, including the court, can see confidential documents? If, if one looks over the counter, mm -hmm. there's documents everywhere. Okay. I understand one. there's documents everywhere. Right. And again, if I were to walk in to the city clerk's office, right, I could walk up all the way to the counter. That's correct. I don't have a phone on me, I don't have a camera on me. I can walk in, correct? Yes. I can stand next to the counter, correct? Just like the gentleman in the video who was leaning on the counter. Remember that part? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Okay. So if there are some confidential documents laying on the counter, I can see them, correct? Right. Yes. The policy doesn't say I can step up to the counter, though, does it? It doesn't. Okay. And the gentleman who was leaning over the counter wasn't told, sir, there's confidential documents here. Back away. Correct? Can you say that again? Sure. Remember the video? There's a gentleman. He's wearing a mask on his chin. The face mask, but it's yes, down. Yes. And he's leaning over. And he wasn't told, sir, you're too close to the counter. There's confidential documents. Back away. That didn't happen. Correct? No, it wasn't filming. So. But you could stand in there and look at it. Sure, like anybody else who comes into a public That's place. fair enough. And like anybody else, I could come in and bring a notepad with me and come up to the counter. I can lean on the counter, correct? You I could. can bring the notepad, correct? You can hold down on the notepad. I can look over the counter, correct? You could. I can walk away and make notes, correct? Now there were some computers uh, in, the, I guess, the foyer area of the city clerk's lobby, right? Off to the right, not behind the counter. Off to the right, there's two computers. Remember that? Yes. Those are accessible to the public, correct? Those are computers in the office for staff. So the two ladies that were sitting off to the side and then were rushed off by one of the staff members, those were employees of town hall? I would have to look back at the question you're talking about. So there's a, you're, you remember testifying, you're very familiar with the city clerk's office? Remember that? You were very familiar with that area? I'm familiar in general with the office. But I wasn't sure what computers you were talking about exactly. Okay. So remember there's a counter, right? Behind the counter there are clerks. Yes. And city hall staff. Yes. On the other side of the counter, as you enter, Immediately to the right, there's a little desk with two computers. Do you remember that? In front of the counter, you mean? Yes, in front of the counter. Okay. Yes. yes. Those computers are accessible to the public, correct? They're accessible to those people who are using it for information on their, for their own business. And they're used to look up web records, right? Probably. Okay. They're used to pull up PDF files, right? I imagine they use them for that kind of purpose, okay. yes. And they can sit next to the computer, correct? I'm sure if there are chairs there or they stand there, but either there. way. Yeah. They can use the computer, right? They can take notes while they're using the computer, correct? Objection, no, Mr. Honor. Talking about a worker taking notes looking at the computer. Oh, yeah, there's a 
been a testimony that this is to secure the documents. I there are has seen computers. I think the court should know. I understand what you're doing. No really objection. Uh, do you have a, uh, I don't want to interrupt your cross-examination, but we're up almost to the break. Do uh, we have a lot left? Yeah, if you are wants to take a break now, we can. We'll stand in recess till uh, 3.45. All right. <laughs> Policy question. Okay. Are you aware of any policies that prohibit drawing 
anywhere in City Hall. Not Danbury City Hall. Um, and if I'm really good, I can capture lifelike images of the employees and the patrons. And I would not be ejected if I'm really good, correct? All yes. the no, it's sustained. There's no prohibition on lifelike drawing in the city hall or in the clerk's office, correct? So long as it's not on the other side of the counter. Check your relevance. Sustained. And I think you mentioned the well, personnel and patrons. The patrons are on the same side of the counter as I am right now, so to speak, correct? Yes, typically. And again, I can see them, right? I can come close to them, stand next to them, in fact, correct? Object, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to object because the evidence says that times are different because of the pandemic and COVID. That was the That's a fair objection. I'll rephrase the question. Thank you, Attorney. On um, July of 2021, I can come up to the counter next to that gentleman that we saw in the video. I stand next to him, correct? Probably. And I think you mentioned private business of patrons, right? Remember that part? Yeah, the video? Yeah. They don't, the patrons don't go behind the counter to have private business, correct? Most of them not. Okay. So again, if they're conducting private business and I'm standing next to them, I would be getting ejected, correct? That's what you're doing. I'm standing next to them. No. Okay. And by the way, City Hall employees at that time, they don't wear name tags, correct? I wish you were a public safety officer. Oh, and none of the City Hall employees in the clerk's office are public safety officers, correct? Right. No. You are not wearing a name tag. I was not. And Forgive the ridiculous question. Nowhere on them is are there social security numbers, addresses, or phones. Correct? Okay. You also mentioned COVID as one of the concerns behind the policy. Remember that? Yes. Okay. So there is on the policy, I believe it's exhibit two. If we need any policy, you have to sign the policy or the and video policy. Well, that's your honor why I'm specifically saying on the exhibit two. The exhibit two mentions masking, right? Yes. Correct? Yes. That's because of COVID, right? Yes. That policy was, according to you, in effect when this video was uh, taken? Yes, it was. You were not wearing a mask. <coughs> and you get the last question, honor. Uh, you, you were not, not wearing, wearing a mask. You were not wearing a mask. Uh, correct? Uh, uh, are you getting attorney Cooper? I will try to speak up, or is there a is, is the microphone behind attorney mm -hmm. Cooper been so linked to you or not? Okay. Oh. You know, I, I, uh, I'm sorry. I am also having difficulty hearing counsel on some of this question. I will try to speak up. Only that that's the best way that the record will be generated at the appropriate time should there be a request. <coughs> I understand. So. You were not wearing a mask on July 15th, 2021, correct? Correct. Phil, the security guard, was not wearing a mask, correct? I wasn't down with him at all times. At that point, point he wasn't. Oh. Okay. And the, I think it's chief clerk or of the office or head clerk, was not wearing a mask. That's right. And the gentleman we saw leaning over the counter was wearing a mask up his chin, correct? Yes. That's not what correct masking is for that time, though, is it? 
He might have been speaking to someone okay. across the... Uh, he may have been, but he was not wearing his mask. Uh, I thought he had the mask down at that oh. moment. Yeah. And in fact, in this video, we see a number of people walking around without a mask. Right. Those probably are people who are not visitors. The policy applies to people coming in who are visitors. Do you so know that for a fact? It says it right there. No, do you know who the people in the video are without masks are? Yes. You know, Tom each and every one. I know the town clerk. I didn't feel like all the people that were in that video performing duties to the city. Including the gentleman who was leading over the county? He was a member of the public. I saw so he had a mask. At least we know the gentleman who was leading over the counter without a mask was not told to leave in this video, correct? Objection. We call for hearsay and foundation. In this video. I will overrule the objection. You can ask the question if you know. Was he told to leave or not? I don't know if he was. I didn't hear anything. That's your answer, Jim. That's a fair answer. And you would agree that the presence of the camera in no way contributes to transmission of COVID, as far as you know. I don't have the expertise for that. Okay, but you had the expertise to assist in drafting of this policy, Exhibit 2, correct? Rejection. Is this same. Same. Is same. Fair enough. Badger as well. If I am, I take, take the initial sustain. <laughs> when you were drafting these policies, or but withdrawn, when you were drafting the memorandum, It certainly wasn't in your mind that a presence of a camera can somehow be related to transmission of COVID, was it? Objection. Relevance outside of the scope of direct examination. No, Your Honor. It's relevant because... How is it relevant? The gentleman testified that these policies, Exhibit 2, were in response to employee safety and uh, uh, security of the documents and because of COVID. And in fact, he references COVID okay. generally. The policies global in, in gen, not specifically to take it, right? The policy is complete in exhibit two. The policies that Why should you also your question to be more specific to make the point you're trying to make? Uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor, let me change the first part. Objection sustained, you can rephrase your question. The concerns about presence of the camera and filming have nothing to do with COVID, correct? I didn't really address that. COVID, the relation was COVID to the camera didn't really enter into it. <clears throat> and if I can answer it, in fact, there's some There's sense. no question, thank you, sir. Again, I'm sure the prosecutor will ask you more questions afterwards. So let's talk about signing it, okay? When the patrons sign in, they're not required to provide an ID, correct? I don't believe, that would be something for the security guards charge. I don't believe they were required to present identification. Okay. I'm not sure of that, because I wasn't doing that. So, and again, if you don't know, that's a valid response. The patrons are not required to provide their home address. Right, they're not. They're not required to provide their phone number. And again, I, I didn't, I wasn't at the front desk performing those duties, so I really can't address that specifically. I can only say I believe not. Fair yeah. enough. They're also not required to provide an email address. Same answer. Do you know if they sign in or the guard just takes their name and writes it down? As far as I could see from what I saw in the the part of the video and some of the documents that... Oh, without the documents, just what we saw. Leave it, the person signs it. Okay. So, if I were to come into Danbury City Hall in July of 2021, I could walk up to the desk, provide a name that says Archibald Bunker, and I would receive a pass, correct? Rejection. How do you know that he's not the security guard? You can answer the question. If you know, the requirement was that the security guard required that the people coming in is to 
provide their name, mm -hmm. sign their name, mm -hmm. and take a card to the office to which they were going. And according to you, that was for the purposes of COVID tracing, correct? That was part of the reason, yes. Part of the reason. Okay. And I think in your memo, you also mentioned concerns since 9-11, right? Yes. Is this also part of that reason? The general security has continued to be a practice of caution for the, protect, uh, for the protection of visitors and patrons to the city hall. Yes. So anyone can come in, give the guard a name, and that is general precaution for the safety of the town hall employees and patrons, correct? Yes. And by the way, by the time of this video, you knew who Mr. Reyes was, right? Objection was part of the objection to form the question. Okay. Stage rephrase. At the time of the video, where we see you talking to Mr. Reyes, yeah. at that time, he already knew who he was. Uh, you check the same objection. I, I understand the objection. I'll draw the question. When you walked downstairs for the first time to meet Mr. Reyes in person, you knew who Mr. Reyes was. I had seen him at the library a month earlier on some video or somebody had told me about it or something, but to that extent, yes. Oh. yes. Do you knew his name? I don't know if I knew his full name. I'm not sure. And when you first came downstairs, you didn't ask him, hey, did you sign in, correct? I don't believe I did. You didn't ask to see his hall pass, correct? I wouldn't do that. It wasn't my job. I'm not asking if it was your job. I'm asking if you did that, correct? Yes, I okay. did. You did, however, <coughs> tell him what you can and can't fill, correct? Yes. That also, though, is not your job, correct? To tell the members of the public what they can or can't do. Well, that particular engagement was to address the specificity of the policy that the security guard was trying mightily to try to get the individual to comply with. So I was clarifying that so that everyone could understand what the policy was. So, and towards the end of your explanation, as you see, uh, you said to Mr. Reyes, you're good, you can go, right? Remember that part? I think I said a couple of occasions that he's good to go as mm -hmm. long as he understands where he can go and where he cannot film. But you didn't tell him he must leave, correct? I don't think I did. You didn't tell him he has to leave, correct? I don't think I did. By the way, the security guard, right? They're not a city employee, correct? I believe that security guard was retained by an agency. A private security company? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you again Exhibit 4. Your some questions about it, but no one read. So in your memorandum, you advise the mayor that There are instances where a filmer seeks to produce a documentary, uh, that there's arrangements to be made, and then, again, you advise the mayor that one last thing to keep in mind is that many times, maybe most times, the video maker is in business, and you, you put those words in italics, correct? Yes. And is not actually a bona fide and credentialed press person. That being the case, the building use policy was created for just that purpose, 
and should be used. Why did you make the choice to bring this attention of somebody being in business as opposed to a credential person? In our review of the situation, we wanted to make clear that there was an opportunity for people to use the business use policy for City Hall if they wanted to come in and use a part of the facility for meetings or engagement, including for business purposes. So I wanted to distinguish between a person who's coming in to film randomly in violation of a policy, for example, versus somebody, and it could apply to the person here, Bob here, that there's an alternative that can be used if, if wished to apply with or to apply for and use the business use policy to come into City Hall and do business. So I understand correctly. It is, in your opinion, that there is a difference between a credential, let's say, member of the press coming in to fill versus a private citizen coming in to fill. Your understanding of the law is that there is a difference? Yes, yes. If you're coming in, if you're a credential press person, you're there for a certain business, a regular visitor is there for their personal business probably. Post to be another so there's a difference there, yes. Probably. Well, you could be both a visitor and a press person and do your business and also be a press person, I suppose. Are you a press person if you don't have press credentials? I can't tell you what the definition of a press person is. I was trying to distinguish and make available to people that there is an opportunity to use City Hall uh, if you apply properly for the business use policy, it's an opportunity for people to use the building. We're not trying to exclude people, we're trying to give them an opportunity. I understand. So you, tell, you just told me you can't tell me what a press person is? Objection, that's the answer. You did use the words press person in your memo, correct? Yes. You knew what that meant when you were telling the mayor, giving him your advice, correct? Well, I put it in the memorandum which he read. Okay. When you wrote the memorandum, you chose those words, correct? Yes. So you know what a press person is, correct? Objection. Yes, the answer. Sustained. You wouldn't put words in there you don't understand, correct? Objection. I didn't hear any question, Your Honor. No. You wouldn't put words in a, mem in a memo to a mayor that you don't understand. Right. Uh, payment information for their cars, for their homes, 
social security numbers, other identifying information on where they live. Uh, you know, the assessor's office has uh, substantial information on field cards, other records, invoices, uh, listing of payments over the last number of years, revaluation information, an assortment of data on people in the country. So would, would a concern might be that if somebody films those areas, they may capture such information on the tape. That's right. <coughs> and certainly, um, for example, social security number information would be relevant to the potential for identity theft. Yes. If you saw someone taking notes of somebody else's information that you've been writing down on a pad, what action, if any, do you think one of your employees may take? Your object to form. I think the question began is what the witness saw and wound up with what somebody else would do. I'll rephrase it. What action, if any, might a employee of City Hall take if somebody saw a patient writing down someone else's information on the street? Objection calls for speculation. Your cross examination was entirely bad, overall. So I can tell you this that any department head observing an, in, an individual who is trying to acquire information that violates someone's personal information <coughs> rights would notify that person to cease. And if they didn't cease, they would take another action, just to call somebody to uh, have them to stop. And on the video that you saw, your conversation with Mr. Reyes, did he indicate to you that twice that he understood the policy, Mr. Reyes? I did, I did hear Mr. Reyes say on at least two occasions that he said he knew the policy and what it said and the limitations on the filming. Yes. And did he appear to you to say that in an unequivocal fashion? Yes. Just asked about the, the kinds of documents that could be in the assessor's office, right? That have personal information. Where are they kept in the assessor's office? They're kept on computers, they're kept in file drawers, they're kept on desks, counters, and they're then carried around by the officials if needed. Okay. And the, I think you were asking what would a 
town official do if they saw somebody taking down somebody's personal information? Right? Remember that point? Yes. So I would have to literally stand here and get some kids out, right? Correct? Right? For that to see you. Again, each case has exactly what was going on. Okay. Well, you were given a specific set of hypothetical conditions. What would a town official do if they saw somebody taking down <coughs> somebody else's information on the, right. right? So in that set of circumstances, if they saw me, yeah. but there's nothing preventing me to look over, correct? And remember my previous question, walking away and taking notes, correct? The situation presented by you would probably not occur necessarily, but the situation that came up was somebody were leaning over and looking at information specifically that could be sent to the taking notes mm -hmm. and continue to do that. Mm -hmm. That would be a concern. Oh. Just looking over is fine. And it depends on what they're doing. If they're just looking and they're not taking in information, either with a camera or otherwise, then we, we, we try to walk with people, not to turn them away. You try to work with people? Welcome, you, welcome people. You try to welcome people even if you think they're looking at somebody's confidential information. Objection, that wasn't me. That's not what he said. Uh, I'm going to sustain the objection question to some argument uh, or misleading. You can rephrase it. Uh, you're saying you try to work, right? So you would need to ascertain whether or not they're really trying to take down somebody else's information, right? Case by case basis, good testing. Right? Yes. Do you try to work with people who are filming on case by case basis, trying to ascertain whether or not they're filming somebody's private information? Yes. Are you mad? Oh, in the case of in the case of filming, the policy in our view speaks for itself. So people can read the policy, understand what the limitations are, and comply with them. And if they don't comply, then the department head or individual has to assess it duly. That. Okay. So again, if they don't comply, then the department head has to assess the situation, right? On a case by case basis? The policy is general, but the assessment of each case is on a case, certainly on a case by case basis. Right. So like and in fact, the policy says you may be denied entry, you may be delayed, it doesn't say you shall be delayed, correct? It says may, yes. Right. So that leaves some discretion to the department supervisor or any employee of the uh, city hall that may be involved in this situation, correct? Well, the discretion is within the confines of the language of the policy. So they know what the policy is and they have to recognize it. And the individual involved has to comply with it. Okay. So is it your understanding that the way the policy works if you're told to comply, you must comply. Right? Well, if you see the policy, you can read it and understand it. And if, and if you don't want to comply, you have to comply. Okay. So, the language. Very good. So, if you see the policy, right? And you understand it. And you're shown the policy, correct? That's what you just told me. Yes. Nowhere in the video is Mr. Reyes shown the policy, correct? I didn't see him being handed the policy. And I think you said uh, the reason why you went downstairs was to assist and advise your client? Uh, you didn't feel to, It was to assess the situation, assist where I could, and advise on the policy so people would understand and try to take care of whatever help I can provide. Right. But do you remember using the word client? I'm sorry? And I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you remember using the word client? Client? Advise my client. Yes. You told us earlier today that Phil wasn't an employee of City Hall, correct? He's not. He's an employee of That's the city. Right. And your job is to advise the mayor and City Hall employees, correct? Yes. 
And do you know whether or not that security guard was fired? Objection. Elements. Sustained. No further questions. Just to clarify, um, Attorney Kitty, you expressly advised the defendant, Mr. Grace himself, what the policy was and explained it to him. Yes. And he acknowledged twice to you in an unequivocal fashion that he understood it. Yes. Nothing further. Uh, what you just told us, that's on the camera, correct? What you're referring to, unequivocal, and what you're advised about, correct? Yes. So we had a chance to see that. There's nothing outside of the camera that you're referring to, correct? Well, in that particular instance, I'm, based upon the question, my answer is <clears throat> what I saw on camera was that I had indicated what the policy was, discussed the policy with Mr. Ray. Just to be clear, my question is as follows. When you mentioned discussing the policy with Mr. Reyes, that event is captured on, this, uh, on the video that we've seen, correct? Yes, yes. And we're not referring to anything we have not seen in the video, correct? No. Okay, no further questions. Thank you, Thank you. And I, I just want to bring one thing to the court's attention. Let's let our witness well, this may oh, this one affect you. Never mind. <coughs> um, we're session tomorrow. My understanding is that city hall is closed tomorrow. So um, the next witness. I wanted they could come in on Monday, but I told them that they're on a subpoena and that they're trial, so I leave to the court. Um, that's, the, uh, that's the town clerk I'm referring to specifically. The town clerk is an extra witness. Yes. They, they have, well, I can, how is the fact that City Hall's open or closed relevant to her responding to a subpoena? She just said she asked me that to ask you. I told her she was on a subpoena, she probably have to testify. If she's your next witness. Yeah. And more of the day. All right, so. Like, having said that, I assume you're on over the session tomorrow at 2.15, that's where you customarily start? Yes, yeah, so, so uh, seeing it in light of the time, we'll do any more testimony today, but I'll tell counsel, Fridays here for me are as follows. I have the criminal document, which you've seen me finishing up. The moral document is, 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 is relatively small in comparison to today's, but certainly in comparison to Tuesday's. Um, I also do the housing document next door. Usually I'm done with the housing doctor prior to the lunch and recess, and I'm back and forth between two courtrooms uh, for the morning, and then we finish up whatever is traveling in the afternoon. I've seen the docket. I suspect we will be done with both of those dockets and ready to take a full afternoon, 2.15 or so, beginning to a state of uh, I appreciate everybody's patience. I just, the court's opinion something like this. Once it starts, it's good to just get it finished. And, uh, well, everybody has has uh, supported the officer schedule. So uh, the idea of the morning is we'll hopefully start this 2.15, and we will go. Was, was tomorrow the day you had a conflict? You had something in the afternoon? No. Counsel, Attorney Koopman, Attorney Seeger, you're good tomorrow afternoon if we go till this time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, OK. Uh, so Mr. Rance, we'll see uh, you and everyone else here tomorrow. 2.15, if there's any issues council has, you can bring to my attention at any time, but I will certainly be available uh, from 1 o'clock until 2.15. Thank you. Thesis. All right, court now adjourned.